G'day and welcome back to my workbench. Now, look where the St. Louis has got to. Yeah, a lot's happened since last time. The hull's glued up, the decks are glued in, all that's happened. I've made a stand for it, put it on some brass pedestals. That's really lifted it, literally. And uh, I have detailed and painted up all those masks. I'll show you all of that in this video. I'll show you how I did the base and got the um, pedestals on. I'll show you the decks going in. I'll show you how I basically painted up those masks. There's a lot to unpack in this video. So I hope you'll hang in there and uh, watch it. All right? Okay, roll the music. <laughs> I had finished the painting on the side and I had made up all my deck pieces and I'd been working on those guns but everything had been pretty well dry fit nothing had been glued together but now I have glued the whole halves together and they came together very nice it didn't require much putty at all to seal up that keel and away we go I've drilled some holes in the hull see them at the bottom there and they match up to holes corresponding holes I've made on a baseboard here, which I've just put a bit of varnish on. Now those nuts in there, they were put in the same method I use all the time. I did that in the Sadlers. If you've watched the Sadlers video previously, you would have seen how I put, um, I assemble the whole thing, base, pedestal, screws, everything, finger tighten the nuts in place, and then I put white glue around them. Now the reason I do this is, sure you can super glue them, but super glue has a habit of snapping and shearing. So I prefer white glue because it's got a little bit of give in it. So as you try and screw things in and tighten things up, it's not going to suddenly shear and snap and fall off. And of course, once I've got this all sealed up with the decks in, the last thing I want is loose nuts floating around my boat. Okay, there's enough nuts on this channel as it is. All right, now, they're all nicely dry. They have been for some weeks now. And it's time really to assemble this thing. The, um, the base is just a simple one that was made for me. It's it's only sort of a craft board. It's nothing fancy. I didn't stain it. I kind of like it being a similar colour to the boat. That sort of same sort of wood colour. So we'll just put that together now. I've already basically drilled in here and um, what do you call that? Rebated um, some some holes that are, that are nice and wide for the um, the, the little thread, threads to go in, right? The little heads heads and threads. Get your mouth really airy. And all I'm going to need to do this is a screwdriver. So there's two of these. I had to cut them to, to size. Here's a short one and a tall one. And let's see if I could tell. I think that's the front one. I think it is. Let's soon find out. How does that fit? Yep. But that one fits better. Yep, that's the front one. Yep. Okay, well, I'll give it a scratch and scrape this hair out. I think you've already scraped a few wire lines. Okay, so these guys just go in here. Uh, so I've already tested this and measured it all. If you want to know how to work out how to do the um, the stands, I talked about it in my Schnellboat video, and I've talked about it also, I think, in the Sadlitz video. And spacing is really all about aesthetics. For me, I need a spacing that's sort of like, you know, a quarter, a quarter and a half, sort of. And I sort of set them up like that, and I keep manually pushing them apart until I get the, the shape that I want. Your um, keel shouldn't exceed the end of the um, baseboard, really. Maybe the rudder can go over. Certainly the, um, the stern's going to lift up and over. Your bow is always going to go over at the front. So, you know, that's just something you have to live with. Now, this one's in place. I'll do them one at a time. It's, it's sort of easier that way in some ways. There's no real magic to this. It just um, it just happens. So through they go. I mean, I've done this a few times, so it should fit. That one's going to go to there, and I've got to have that angled right. That one goes there. Now it's just a matter of screw them in. See if they locate. got that there we go and of course don't put too much pressure on the model because I will break it so I'm being as gentle as I can be I'm not going to screw these like super hard it's going in I can see them 
you really all you're trying to do here is get them to point where they just tighten up. That one's already good. This one needs a little more push. Okay. Whew. Yeah, there we go. So now they are sitting very nicely. They're tucked in there. So um, we can now start gluing the decks in. Now the first deck to go in is the lowest one and it's the main deck and it's the one that we extended. If you haven't seen that video, did that deliberately so I could get more gun ports in. We'll get some more you know, gun carriages in. Already had the gun ports there, but um, they needed uh, carriages. So lining it up here with the edge, I've got to get past those fleur de -lis. Oh, and as I said, it's not an easy job. I've managed to pull out a little piece there. Yeah, that's a tricky one. I mean, ideally, it would be good to glue that in when you glue the whole halves together, but there was so much chicken egg stuff. I needed the whole halves together so I could drill the holes and put the things in and, you know, so um, it's just always compromise. There's always compromise. Okay, so that little edge there, I don't know if you can see it, it's a little edge. Okay, that is where that bulkhead's going to be. So that's got to line up to there. And that's as far as that will go. There we go, click. Okay, so I am in. The thing about that one is I don't even know if I'll bother gluing it because it's really going nowhere. Once that's in, it's just not moving. That is wedged in so hard it's not going to lift. It's not going to go anywhere. But um, I'll probably put some glue in anyway. But we can move on. Now, I need to get this little deck in here. The foredeck here on the forecastle. And its position. Pretty well there. But um, yeah, I need to make sure... that it fits hard against this little bulkhead, the one I made with the um, the doors. So that goes in there. And that's exactly where that sits. And that should sit there. So that is good. All right, I can glue that one in now. All right, let's get on with this. Put the transom in, well the stern if you like, transom is really just that part there. I uh, haven't put this in yet because I need this to set and also this is going to require a bit of filler to fit in there. It does fit, I've shaped it and it fits, it goes in rather well, but it will require a little bit of filler here and there. There was so much glue and gunk on this because remember when I got this kit it was already glued together very badly 
and everything was out of place. Nothing was lined up properly. I had to cut away all the junk that they had and all the globs of blue and then reshape everything and do the best I could. So this part will be left off for now. I don't know if I showed you that I painted it all up. I'm not, I don't remember. When I went in there and I detail painted everything, I used my Posca pen again to get all the gilding in there, all the gold details. It was a lot of fun. came up well. The moulding is just lovely. I mean, it's better than the... Um, the Hella kit just gives you a sticker at the back there and sort of says, there you go. Whereas at least Airfix have got all the trouble, whoever sort of carved this model originally, did a beautiful job with all the detail in there. Because it's full relief. And I'll just, you know, basically use my pens to pick out all that detail. So that will get glued in there next time because I'll do some filling. So um, basically, we've got that far. What I want to do now is show you how I made the masts. Now, although the parts are pretty well flash free for the masks in the yard, so that's good. There are some seam lines contend with, but there's also quite a lot of annoying injection marks. So they all need to be cleaned off. Luckily, all of mine pretty well scraped off and then sanded smooth. So there was no filling required, but not so with um, a number of sinkholes. And uh, they're only happening on the very thick pieces, like here in the main and the mizzen mast where there's these large sort of chunky sections underneath the uh, crow's nest or um, on top of here where the upper mast is going in. So yeah, they're um, they're big enough to be really noticeable and I'm going to have to fill them, but it's no big deal. No big deal at all. Uh, so it's a very simple matter. I'm just using a bit of plastic putty here. sets fairly quickly it's very easy to sand in fact you can wipe it smooth with a cloth and often that's your job done these ones might take a little longer to dry they are quite deep so see how we go this stuff can shrink if you put a lot on there so we'll see how that goes and if it shrinks but a little one like on the top of here where there's really only a tiny little sink depression I can just tap this on and away we go. This stuff is really good if you're doing aircraft routes because it's water based and so you can literally put it into the wing root, lick your finger and go and remove any excess and end up with a beautiful little curve. And when it dries, you can pretty well paint straight over it. One of the very nice details on this kit, uh, the ropes are already molded in, so that's good. Basically, they they to hold the whole mast together. Masts actually, well, I suppose they were roundish, but they're made up of lots of parts. Like it's not just one tree trunk, not at all. They're made out of lots of sections, and then they all come together. And perfectly round mast, I don't know if that's actually accurate, but to all intents and purposes, they're pretty round. Top here, you've got parrels, and what they are is the um, the yard sits there, and when the yard has to swing, you know, starboard or port. Because you're tacking, because the wind direction, you tack the ship, you know. The, 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 the yards are not always just perpendicular to the keel of the ship. They, um, they angle and they catch the wind. If you're on sailing, you know, you kind of flip your sails around, catch the wind and you push against angles. Well, the parrels are what allows those yards to roll around the mast. It's stopped from falling down by, by slings and other things. But um, the parrels allow the rotation without scoring great big holes or wrecking your mast. So there you go. And they're all moulded on there. It's the first time I've seen perils moulded on a um, mast. It's lovely. So there's a lot of detail and a lot of things you can look at that make this kit really nice. So um, it should paint up and detail up beautifully.
this is the upper mast for the mizzen and you notice there are lots of blobs and things on it it's good to know what to keep and what to cut away because that's going to prove to um, be disastrous later if you cut the wrong thing off these for example you always keep on because the other mast from below part of it butts up and into those so you do need those this however you can tell it's got a big um, circle like that's just an injection point so we'll remove that one and of course that was the um, the sprue point on the um, sprue gate so it's always worth checking when you're cutting things off where did you cut because that'll help you know what you need to trim all right uh, you know I do need to cut that little bit off there because that is going to butt directly to the um, the crow's nest there so again refer to your diagrams have a look at photos or try and find pictures of the ship and that will help you <music>
my crow's nest. I know it's going to tilt that way, but this way it needs to be sitting perpendicular. So I can check that as well. So it needs just a slight lift. So with the contactor it allows me to make a few adjustments and it's getting you know, more cemented all the time till eventually I know I've got it right and it'll just hold in place and set. I finished cleaning up all my masks and I've put two coats of Steiner Res Primer on them. I've used the uh, Power Mustard, which is the colour that I've used on the rest of the hull to basically get that sort of dull yellow colour. And I'm pretty happy with that. It matches the box up. So they've come up rather well. Now, researching the St. Louis is difficult because there's very little real information about it, even to the point of whether it actually was a real ship. It's very hard to tell. There were certainly other ships with similar names, but they were from different periods. So we just have to go with the kind of look for a ship for that period. And the, the, the Corione, as I call it, although I believe the correct pronunciation is Coron, right? Like Crown, all right? Uh, it was built afterwards and it was built by the French. But still, I think their colour schemes would have been similar. So we can take some cues from that. And that's basically kind of what I did on the hull although I've used the box art a lot I really like the uh, the whole look on this box art so I've pretty well gone with that so with that theme I'm going to leave the base part of all the masks the pale yellow and I'll just paint in the um, strips here which are the wound ropes and they would have been tarred so they're a, they're a dark colour um, you know, a very dark brown or I'm going to use sort of a very dark grey and stain them with a bit of um, lamp green. As we go up, I think the crow's nests are pretty well wooden. They may have had some coloured trim on them. I might do that. I might put a little uh, accent of, I might leave a little bit of yellow or whatever. These caps are generally black and where they would have stood in here, well, there's probably tar on those. I'll I don't know, I'll probably make them a darker brown, probably add a bit of my um, soot effect. So what I'm going to do from there on is I'm just going to leave them the wood colour, like I did on the bounty. So they're basically wooden. Even the, um, the flagstaff here at the top, I'll just leave that a wooden colour. So I'll use my Life Colour Wood Deck Shadow that I've used in the past. That'll give me the effects I want there. And then I'll add a little bit of the darker soot, which is actually just a dark brown. Where is it? Soot. It's actually just a bit of a darker brown. I'll put some soot effects in the crow's nest. So that should paint my masks up and they'll at least tie in with the rest of the model. blocked in the basic colours. I've got those wood effects started. There's a lot more that needs to be done to these masts. I really need to add more detail to them and there's, I'm doing some more research to see what I need to do. But one huge problem that I've only just noticed is uh, where do the rat lines come up? There's usually a hole here and it's missing from all of these little bloody, um, you know, rat's nests here. So, um, yeah, that is a problem, and it really should have, there should be a little, at least a little L-shaped or um, D-shaped or even just a rectangular space there, and there should be at least holes in these so that halyards and things can run up through and all those shrouds for the rat lines, because without that, I can't really build it the way I want to build it. If you were just using the fixed ones that are in the kit and then gluing them on, yeah, you'd glue them underneath, job done, that's it. But I'm trying to do a proper job. I need my rat lines to run through these little fighting platforms and to come up and through in between the masts where they're supposed to go. 
it's got a little gap there. So I'm going to have to do some scratch work, but that will be next time. I really don't have time to do that today, and I'd like to get this video finished. So I'll let those dry, and then we'll do our complete dry fit and see what the ship's looking like. All right, moment of truth, do things fit? Yep, that one goes in nicely, not a problem there. Foremast, it should fit here. Yep, there we go, that's in. Main mast, which goes over here. Should go in there nicely, good. And last but not least, we have the mizzen mast. Should fit here. Okay, they just dry fit. So there we go. All my masts are now in. I can't even get it in the full shot. This is so much bigger than my bounty. My bounty was only about this big. This thing's about one and a half times the size of the bounty. So I used to be able to get my bounty in the shot. A lot of people thought that bounty was quite big, but you know, you can now see this is a much bigger ship, much bigger ship. But she's starting to come together and I've still got some work to do and I've got a few little fix ups. There's a couple of seam lines that only popped out once I put the wash on those masts. So they're going to have to be addressed. And as I said, I've got to get the stern piece in. There's flags, there's more deck pieces to go on. There's so much more that needs to be done on the ship, including all the guns have got to go in and tie down the deck and put into these little cannon ports here and all the cannon flaps yep all those have got to go in there's quite a lot still to do but that's okay it's a lot of fun we haven't even started on the rigging but yeah we'll get to that that's as much as i can show you for today but it certainly is starting to really look like a ship and it is a far cry from the um the wrecked blobby model that i got about six months ago so there you go all right i'll leave it there uh, if you like what you've seen, you know, hit that like button, comment, just be, you know, just be polite about it, just be civil. And by all means, subscribe to my channel if you like what I'm doing. And if you really want to help me out, there's always Patreon and YouTube members. There's links for that, both probably at the end of this video or up on the screen there. And also um, in the description, you can always find links there if you want to just sling me a bit more money because you really like what I'm doing. It all helps. It helps keep me making these videos. All right, that's it. It's goodbye from Australia and it's hooray from Harry Udini.